Mir ist jetzt hier also mitgeteilt worden, dass eine solche Mitteilung heute schon äh, verbreitet worden ist. Sie müsste eigentlich in Ihrem Besitz sein. Also Privatreisen nach dem Ausland können ohne Vorliegen von Voraussetzungen, Reiseanlässe und Verwandtschaftsverhältnisse beantragt werden. Die Genehmigungen werden kurzfristig erteilt. Zuständige Abteilung Pass- und Meldewesen der VP, der Volkspolizei, Kreisämter in der DDR sind angewiesen, Visa zur ständigen Ausreise unverzüglich zu erteilen, ohne dass dafür noch geltende Voraussetzungen für eine ständige Ausreise vorliegen müssen. Äh, ständige Ausreisen können über alle Grenzübergangsstellen der DDR zur BRD erfolgen. Damit entfällt die vorübergehende ermöglichte Erteilung von entsprechenden Genehmigungen in Auslandsvertretung der DDR bzw. die ständige Ausreise mit dem Personalausweis der DDR über Drittstaaten. Die Passfrage kann ich jetzt nicht beantworten. Das ist auch eine technische Frage. Ich weiß ja nicht, die Testpässe müssen ja, also damit jeder im Besitz eines Passes überhaupt erstmal ausgegeben werden. Wir wollten aber Entscheidend sicherlich eine, inhaltliche Aussage. Ist die, das tritt nach meiner Kenntnis, ist das sofort. Unverzüglich. Wie die Presseabteilung des Ministeriums hat der Ministerrat beschlossen, dass bis zum Inkrafttreten einer entsprechenden gesetzlichen Regelung durch die Volkskammer diese Übergangsregelung in Kraft gesetzt wird. Also doch, doch, ständige Ausreden können über alle Grenzübergangsstellen der DDR zur BRD bzw. zu Berlin-West erfolgen. On the 9th of November 1989 Uh, the SED Secretary Günter Schabowski made the announcement you just heard and uh, what followed was uh, what is now called the uh, fall of the Berlin Wall. For more than 40 years um, East and West Germany were divided and um, in 1961 um, on pressure of the USSR, the East German Politburo um, started to build a wall in Berlin and a very high um, defense uh, um, fence system around East Germany to keep the people in and safe. The following months, the uh, German uh, Chancellor Helmut Kohl and the international um, leaders like, uh, like Margaret Thatcher, George Bush and others um, haggled about the reunification of Germany and in 1990, on October the 3rd, Germany was finally reunited in its modern form. Today, this day is 30 years ago and I can't imagine what my life would have been um, if this wouldn't have happened. Because um, as you might know, I am from East Germany. I was born in the GDR in 1988. So when the GDR still existed, one year before the um, fall of the Berlin Wall, two years before the un uh, reunification. And when I was three and a half years old in 1992, my family moved to Hamburg in West Germany and this is where I'm living now uh, ever since. And I'm not planning to leave anytime soon um, for any other place except maybe Norderstedt, which is a tiny town um, north of Hamburg where I actually lived um, some time. And um, with all this Welcome to today's special to the um, pretty much only German uh, national holiday, the um, Day of German Unity or in uh, German Tag der Deutschen Einheit. Um, and for this I thought of a few things I want to do with you. Um, the first thing would be I will take um, a citizenship test. So what Imagine a world where the wall would never have fallen, where Germany is not um, reunited. Um, what kind of world would that be? I don't know. A sad world, especially for me. But what if I then would be able to move to West Germany and had to take a citizenship test because um, it wasn't necessary then because West Germany claimed East Germany as their own and every East German citizen was automatically a citizen of West Germany. But what if they finally um, and actually uh, acknowledged 
East Germany as their own sovereign, sovereign country. Uh, in that case, I would have to take a citizenship test if I want to become a citizen. I will take the test with you. I will maybe make a GeoGuessr um, uh, uh, thingy for East Germany and I um, will try to tackle and solve um, some pre cliches about Germans. Um, so, lean back, enjoy, have fun. So yeah, short introduction, my name is Ossi Eastborn, I'm 31 years old, I'm from East Germany, as I said, uh, but raised and living now in Hamburg. I'm a former video game journalist and a former history student without degree, and um, I have just started a new Discord server where um, I would be happy if you could join and leave some questions you have about Germany uh, or Germans, um, or if you want to participate in uh, making up a few questions you can ask me um, about the topics I uh, spoke about on this channel, like like um, how much do I still know from the things I um, researched, for example. I think that would be a, a funny thing for a um, hundred um, uh, subscriber special. And um, yeah, um, um, if you might, you might have noticed that the Ancient Rome video, which was due to release yesterday, uh, wasn't released yesterday. This is because it takes a lot of time to edit. Um, I will postpone it a week because I was um, ill um, the whole last week and maybe you can still hear it. Um, I had a cold, don't worry. Um, and uh, yeah, but I will do my best to release it next Friday. Um, but for now, I wanted to do the special, and uh, here it is. Let's start. So what we have here now is the um, is an example for the um, for the citizenship test um, that you have to do when you want to become um, a citizen of Germany. Um, all the questions and answers are in German, but I will um, translate them. Um, Maybe even in the in the info text box, but um, as I want th uh, this video to to be on point on uh, 3rd of October, uh, I might uh, have to to rush the edit and maybe leave that out. But I will say it. So let's start with the test. Um, it's 33 questions, and I have to uh, answer 17 right. Uh, hello, okay. Uh, okay, error. Okay. All right. Which is the uh, ensign of the Federal Republic of Germany? Is it the um, eagle? Is it this, which kind of looks like Poland, but I don't know, maybe Prussia. Um, this is the Wehrmacht um, or it is actually now um, also used in a, in a uh, different form by the Bundeswehr, uh, and this is the ensign of the of the um, German Democratic Republic. So the answer is one. For what celebration the people in Germany wear um, colorful costumes and masks? That would be the uh, so the answer possibilities is. Um, Rose Monday, um, the uh, 1st of May, the Oktoberfest, or uh, whatever Pfingsten is in English. Um, it's it's Carnival, so it's um, Rose Monday. But it's only in, in uh, certain parts. It's pretty much only in North Rhine-Westphalia, where Carnival is really celebrated in Germany. From which age on uh, a Ger um, you are allowed in Germany to uh, uh, to go through the elections for the German um, diet. Um, you, there are um, provinces and, and counties where you can actually um, go to the elections from the age of 16 and there are campaigns to drop it down, but the correct answer is 18. Let's say what can you do according to the German um, Grundgesetz, which is the basic law, which is the constitution of Germany. And the answer is, of course, a fine. In Hessen, uh, 
Hessen, Hesse, ja, Hesse, ja, ist die englische Word, is the um, only German state where the death penalty is still um, in their state constitution, but because the federal constitution breaks the state um, constitution, it is ineffective. With what words start the German national hymn? People hear the signals, unity and Jews jurisdiction and uh, freedom um, unity and right and freedom Freude schöner Götterfunken I think that's that's something you know in, in English as well it's from um, Beethoven's uh, Ninth Symphony uh, joy to to uh, joy pretty God spark would be the literal translation and uh, Germany uni United um, Fatherland, which is part of the um, GDR national anthem. But it's, uh, of course, unity and um, right and freedom, which is also the motto of Germany. Uh, and unity is what we achieved in 1990. Right is what we have. We, we, we are... Uh, lawful country and uh, we also have a lot of freedom when is it allowed in germany to forbid a party when their election uh, campaign is too expensive when they fight against the constitution when they criticize the head of state when their program um, suggests a new direction and of course the only way um, a party can be forbidden is if they are against the constitution um, because um, a party that is against the constitution can't be vote be can't be elected under the concept of said constitution because they reject it this is a, parad a paradox and you can criticize um, the, the leader of the country as much as you want. As long as you don't get too personal, um, because to insult some, someone is not um, covered by um, freedom of speech. What does the um, shortage CDU in Germany mean? Christian German Union, um, Club of German uh, uh, Manufacturers, or company yeasts, um, Christian German um, Environment Protection or Christian Democratic Union. And of course it's the um, Christian Democratic Union. For how many years the uh, Bundestag in Germany is elected? It's uh, two, four, six or eight years and it is four years. The president is for five years. And in some states, I think um, they have five years as well for their um, ministers, but I'm not quite sure about that. The elections in Germany are special, secret, um, according to your job or according to, uh, to your gender. Uh, no, that is forbidden, that is forbidden, that is stupid, it's of course secret. There are free, secret, um, equal uh, and stuff. Oh, I, I just see I have a timer here. 51 uh, minutes I have left for these questions. But we are at 10 of 33. So, uh, freedom of speech in Germany means that I make false claims on flyers, uh, state my opinion in um, readers, uh, reader, reading letters, reader, readers' letters. Um, I can wear Nazi symbols or my opinion, uh, I can say my opinion as long as I do not um, say, contradict the, the, um, the I can say my opinion as long as I do not contradict the government. This would be dictatory. This is forbidden. And uh, this is basically lying and does not is not covered by freedom of speech. It's of course, I can say my opinion in reader's letters. What is the 5% hurdle? Uh, is it voting rules in the Bundestag for small parties? Attendance control in the Bundestag for votes? 
minimum percentage of voters to get into parliament, attendance check in the Bundesrat, in the Bundesrat for voters. And uh, um, the 5% hurdle is, of course, when you um, pretty much at any election, um, your party has to get at least 5% of the pop, uh, popular vote to be elected into office. And um, that way we can have uh, like um, today seven bigger parties that are represented in, in uh, different um, governments and I think six right now in the uh, federal government and um, yeah so it's of course the uh, minimum percentage here. In a democracy one function of um, Periodical uh, elections is to force citizens to cast their votes, to allow the change of government according to the will of the voter majority, to maintain existing laws in the country, 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 uh, to give more power to the poor. And of course, it is second. Just, it is, it just is. <laughs> in Germany, a mayor or a female mayor is the director of a school, the head of a bank, the head of a community, the leader of a party. I thought it's it's the head of, of a city, like in Hamburg um, or like like other states have their prime minister, if you if you want. And uh, in Bremen and uh, Hamburg, we have the uh, first mayor. Um, but okay, it, it can be. For any community, uh, the leader of any community is the mayor in that case. Bürgermeister literally means citizen's master. Which sounds a bit weird. What is allowed at uh, Bundestags and state elections in Germany? The husband's husband votes for his wife? No, nope. we don't have such thing here. You can cast your vote by postal vote. Yes, you can. You can vote by telephone on election day. Nope, that wouldn't be secret and stuff. Um, children from the age of 13, 14 may vote. You have, of course, the right to um, vote per letter, which is totally safe even in the US, even if some people say otherwise, contrary to actually everyone, especially those who are experts. Um, a judge or a female judge in Germany is part of the judicative, executive, operative or legislative. Legislative is those who make or yeah, who make the laws, um, which is the Bundestag. The executive is those who enforce the law, which is the government and um, by extension the police. And the judicative is those uh, are those who judge over the laws, where a judge already is in. What is forbidden by the German basic law? Military service, force labor, free uh, choice of your job or working in the uh, working um, in, in the foreign country of course forced labor is it always answer to the third reich was a dictatory democracy the dem democracy uh, monarchy or whatever the last one is rate republic uh, uh, we, we know we all know it was a dictatorial Dictatorship, I think, is the right word. I, uh, yeah. What is significant for the NS state? A polit politics of state racism, freedom, uh, freedom of speech. No. Um, uh, general religious freedom. Nope. The development of democracy. Nope. It is state racism, as we all know. What happened? on the 9th of November 1938 in Germany. With the attack of Poland, the Second World War um, starts. No, that was uh, on the 1st of September in 1939. The National Socialists lose, lose an election and um, 
disband the uh, Reichstag. Nope. Uh, Jewish shops and synagogues are demolished, uh, not destroyed by National Socialists, uh, which will, would be the Reichskristallnacht or the um, Reichskristall Night, I think it was. Uh, Hitler is becoming Reichspräsident or President of the of the Reich and um, forbids all parties. No, that was in '34 when Hindenburg died. So it would be this. There are a lot of questions about National Socialism. I mean, showing that Germany is taking responsibility, but yeah. What existed during the time of National Socialism in Germany? Parties were forbidden, the right to free development of personality, freedom of the press, the protection of human dignity. Of course, it is parties were forbidden. Oh, a question for the actual topic today. Why do we call the time in uh, autumn 1989 in the DDR the change? In this time, the GDR changed politically from a dictatorship to a democracy, from a liberal um, market economy to um, socialism, from monarchy to social democracy, from a religious state to a communistic state. Uh, no, it was a socialist and communist state. Uh, and it, <sighs> I'm, I'm not really happy with that question because it was no real uh, dictatorship. It wasn't like um, Hernika was a dictator. Um, he was... Uh, he and it was a one-party dictatorship, but it's it's more an oligarchy. I don't know, but but yeah, it, uh, I think that's what they want. The Federal Republic of Germany has the uh, borders of today since, uh, of course, 1990. This is why we do this 30 years um, ago. The European Parliament. Wow, I have also to answer questions about the EU. Okay, the European Parliament uh, will be elected periodically. All, I think, in this case, it's five years. What country is a neighboring country of Germany? Finland, Denmark, Norway or Sweden? And of course, it's Norway. Technically, it's also Sweden because all that... I mean, it's only the Baltic Sea. The Baltic Sea is not a country. But that's very technical, I think. But but there are ferries from uh, from Germany to Sweden as well. The Job Information Center or BIZ in uh, of the uh, Federal Agency for um, Employment in Germany helps with. Um, Pension calculation, apprenticeship search, tax declaration, or health ins insurance. Um, uh, I mean, it, it has to be this one. The apprenticeship search. It also helps, helps with finding a job. So, okay. A married couple wants to open a restaurant in Germany. What? is absolutely needed. The allowance of the police, the allowance of a party, a permit from the registration office, a restaurant permit from the competent authority. Uh, it is the uh, restaurant permit, of course. But you don't only need that permit, you also need a serving license um, if you want to serve drinks of any kind. even. If you have, so even if you have a, have a, um, a corner uh, shop and you want to sell drinks, then you need a servicing license. You have to be licensed to sell any kind of drinkable item. What? No. An error again? All right, I just took the test again. It's apparently always the same questions, so. We are now at 27 of 33 and I hope no further uh, 
An adult woman wants to do her um, A level in Germany um, later. <laughs> When she wants to do that, she can do this on a, a high school, an evening gymnasium or evening college, uh, a, a Hauptschule. I, I don't think there is a um, main school, would be the literal translation, but I don't think there is one or private uh, university. Uh, she can do that on an evening uh, college, but she could also just go to a normal college. I don't know. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not college. It's, um, what, what would be the equivalent? Um, don't matter. That's the right answer. <laughs> When does the legal night sleep begin? In Germany, I, I don't know. It's you, from a certain time to a certain time in Germany, you have to be more or less silent, which means uh, room uh, volume. So um, you don't, uh, for example, I record this late in the night and I couldn't scream now because if my neighbor is, is annoyed by me, um, he could call the police and uh, this, this time of silence uh, Uh, or low volume, let's say, starts at 10 p.m. Not when the sun goes down, not when the neighbors go asleep, not at midnight, at 10 p.m. A man in a wheelchair has um, has uh, applied for a job as a book holder, bookkeeper. Um, what's an example for discrimination? Um, If it if uh, is it discrimination if he gets the job only because uh, doesn't get the job only because he sits in a wheelchair he has no experience when he has too high um, salary expectations or if he doesn't speak English um, this are ve uh, this are valid reasons um, to to not hire him but this is discrimination in the GDR um, there were for, first and foremost no. Uh, mainly migrants from Vietnam, Poland, Mozambique, France, Romania, Somalia, Chile, Ungarn, Zimbabwe, North Korea, Mexico, Egypt. Um, a former roommate of mine was from uh, Vietnam. His father was uh, migrated from Vietnam by the um, Soviets into the GDR. And um, of course it's um, friendly um, Uh, communistic states um, that helped in East Germany, whereas um, West Germany had most of their migrants from uh, Turkey, Italy, and I think the Netherlands, perhaps? I don't know the third biggest group, but um, the first two were um, Turkey and Italy. Okay, which of this coat of arms um, is from the state of Berlin? This is Hamburg, this is Bremen. This is Hesse, I think. This is Berlin. Okay, two, two questions to go. Don't break down now. Um, how is the um, leader of government and the female form of that um, in Berlin called? It is if is it the prime minister? Is it the um, uh, Major Mayor, <laughs> uh, Over Mayor, the uh, President of the Senate, or the um, reigning Mayor and female forms. <sighs> Actually, I don't know. I know Bremen and Hamburg have, have their first Mayor, but I don't know if it's the the Major Mayor or the um, reigning mayor uh, I have to take a guess here and I think it is the second one I actually don't know which of the states is Berlin this is Bremen this is the Saarland or maybe the 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 coat of arms was from Saarland hmm. this is Hamburg and of course this again is Bremen, uh, Berlin now with a full functioning Uh, I want to end, and yes, I want. 100% get in. That's nice. 
I'm I'm now a full uh, citizen of Germany. Um, yeah, nice. 33 questions, 33 uh, correct answers. So I, I was right with the reigning mayor of Berlin. And um, I will put the test, a link to the test in the description as well as a link to a document where you have all... Um, I don't know if it's all, but there are a um, hundred questions um, that are rotating in these tests. So if you have a second try that you don't get these uh, same questions as the first time, so it's harder. Um, I will put that in the in, uh, uh, description as well. But yeah, 100 percent. I'm 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 a proud. I'm a good German. Okay, friends. Now part two. Um, this is, um, yeah, GeoGuessr, East Germany, it's a custom map, um, it's uh, with 58 locations, I'm pretty sure most of them will be around uh, Berlin and, and uh, Potsdam and Brandenburg and that area, but um, I'm totally open for surprises. Um, we have one shot because I don't want to pay two euros right now to play more. Um, and I only can play once a day. So let's make the best out of it. Single player. Use default settings. No time limit moving allowed. Yes. Start game. Alright. This... Uh, somewhere in eastern Germany. So I just cut out the, the ad. Um, yeah, so let's see if we can... Oh, look at him. He's living the dream. My dream. Whew. Okay, okay. Uh, we have a sign and it is... Gera. Gera. Alright, alright. Gera, 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 where would Gera be? I think it's South Brandenburg. Oh, there it is. Um, we are looking... Dang it, is the red one south or is the red one north? North. So if... Okay, that makes no difference. But we are on the um, 38, or the, the Autobahn 38, uh, we are on the 186, so there's the 38, so I think we're going south, and we are on the 186, which is here. So we are around Leipzig. I won't I won't go for perfect score here, the video will be long enough, so let's put us around here. Take a guess and 562 meters away. Well, that's what I call close. Next round. All right, all right. Uh, first vibe I get is Potsdam, the old um, castle San San Curie, or uh, I, I actually forgot the the name of the castle of the Prussians. Maybe I don't know. It it is some kind of. Is here no no sign or something? It is it's nice. It's, I, I I would visit. Take if you picked. Okay okay. Uh, that's definitely Potsdam. I I think I remember this. I think I remember this from a video from Horrible Histories. Um, from the Highwaymans. Okay, it's the um, Dick Turpin video. Um, uh, no, that's something different. But it's, uh, I mean, kind of. Same art style. 
Um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that this is a castle in uh, Potsdam. Uh, Sansushi, that's what I mean. Maybe it would not really add up. So, no, here. Um, with the with the water, though, um, there are maybe here the new pali. No, huh? I know there is another um, castle. I think, or am I completely wrong? It's not Schwerin. It's not House of the Wannsee Conference. No, there is no bridge, and we were. Military Historic Museum. Okay, maybe we get... A sign somewhere? Maybe I'm, I'm completely off. So... Dang it. Okay, I can only... What, what's, what's that sign saying here? I can't read it. Um, yeah, I mean, Germany has a lot of places like this, uh, so <sighs> no clue. Um, let's go to the start again and let's go in this direction if it lets us, because maybe at the park entrance there is a sign. I mean, I can see a sign. No, no, what are you doing? I want to go there. Oh, dang it. I don't want to go here. I want, I want a nice little sign. Okay, may maybe, maybe here. Come on, tell me what you are. Okay, now we can go here. We can't go there. Don't dare you. Dang it. Okay, I've, I, I, I will give myself like a few more seconds and then I will uh, take a guess because if I don't find anything, then yeah. This is remote. This this is no this is not in Potsdam. This is some somewhere very remote. Which could explain why no one's here. <laughs> oh 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 there was there was a sign, wasn't there? Uh th this is also a sign. But I can't read it. It's too bright. Wow, that's far. Okay, okay, okay. Just a bit clo Oh, Rheinsberg. Rheinsberg. Uh, if I had any clue where that is, where the heck would Rheinsberg be? Um. I'm no clue. Completely honest with you, I have no clue whatsoever where Rheinsberg could be. I mean, it's not on the Rhine, because the Rhine is uh, far away from East Germany. Um, so... It's uh, no, it's it's not hilly, so it's not in Saxony, not that far in the south. It's it's very flat, so maybe somewhere here in the north, Western Haveland, Uckermark, Great Seas or Lakes. I have no clue. I will just. there. So, let's take a guess. 
It's not that far away. It's uh, 53 kilometers. So, yeah, it's... Uh, oh, there, there it is, Rheinsberg. Yeah, now we know. It's apparently not as remote as I thought. If I had gone to the other side, I would have entered the city. Uh, that's completely my fault. Oh, great, an autobahn again. Or country road. I'm not... I don't think it's an autobahn. Uh, and I can go in, uh, can only go in this direction. All right. Have it your way. Um, it's again very flat. So, like the last two, I would at first sight uh, say we are in Brandenburg again. Or maybe Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. But... This sign will tell if we get close enough to actually read it. So we are going. Uh, we we where? This was south. So this is north. So this is west. So we are more or less going east towards Leipzig. I can't read the actual sign. But I would say we are around here. Maybe even here. No, 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 no. that's... Mm, wait, Wallendorf Luppe, isn't that Belantis Park? Is there anything Belantis Park? I don't see no Belantis Park. But I think we are maybe here. Let's take a guess. Yeah. So, okay, let's move on. Okay, uh, 19 kilometers. That's not that far off. And it seems we were south of Leipzig, um, but southeast. So, oh, great. Uh, that's not what I wanted. All right, 186. But we were in, uh, is it still Saxony? Or is it already Saxony Anhalt? Where is the border is the, uh, the question. I don't know, doesn't show me. Okay, uh, next round. Let's get this settled. Uh, all right. There's an election coming on here. Oh, that's nice. That's too far away. Let's move a bit closer. That's still too far away. So taking baby steps and it seems like uh, no is there any no free voters oh what why didn't I see that previously? Okay, Stettin, Eberswalde, Berlin. Um, we are looking in some direction. But I know Berlin and I think I know Stettin. Where is Stettin? I think it is close to here. But I'm not... But, uh, uh, wait, 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 Eberswalde, Eberswalde, there. We have Eberswalde. Uh, hello? Eberswalde, 27 kilometers in that direction, which is either north or south. And to the left is Berlin. So... Yeah, Berlin Buch, okay. Where the heck is Berlin Buch? 
Ähm, wer ist Berlin Buch? And it's the no route number, okay, but the Autobahn 11 is close by, which would be this one here. Uh, where was Buch? Buch, 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 we, we just had it. Dude, we just had it. There, Buch. So, maybe... Around here. Uh, wait a second. Maybe we are here in uh, Panketal, whatever. Uh, let's take. Let's say here. Oof. Three kilometers. That's very close. Okay, we were in Bernau. Uh, okay, last round. Last round. Uh, Polish trucks. That's nice. Uh, somewhere on the Autobahn. The good old Autobahn. Wait, what, what's that? That looks kind of nice. That looks like... like uh, uh, oh, uh, I was here. I was here. I... Uh, The last time I, I I went to 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 my home, um, to where I come from, to the Erzgebirge, um, I was here. I remember that pyramid. Pyramids are not a uh, site, normal site in Germany. What? No, I I want to go further. C can I go here? No, it won't let me. Frick. Um. Bell? There's... It's some park and it's somewhere along the line between here and here. Which... When I think about it, could be everywhere. So... Let's... Oh, there's... Leipzig. The Lantis Park. Okay, okay. Um... But, so, is the red one now south? Because if it is, then we are entering from the north, which would mean the Belantis Park would be somewhere around here. At Leipzig. At Hall, there's the Saxony Park. At Bull Arena. Race track. Park. I mean, it, it it has to be close to 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 an autobahn, and there are some autobahns here. Uh, here's Saxony Anhalt. There's the border. Uh, so the last one was in Saxony Anhalt. Good to know. Are we in Saxony Anhalt now? I don't know. Um, it doesn't tell me the, the Autobahn number, does it? No. But there is another... No, this is... Alright, alright. Maybe... Maybe this one... No. Neue Hart. Can, can we see... Neue Hart somewhere here? Probably... Just screaming at me right now. I, I can hear you. Uh, no, I can't, but you know what I mean. Neue Hart. Jesus. Where would that be? I don't see any Neue Hart. I might just speed this part up. <laughs> so you don't have... I never noticed that Leipzig is directly on the on the border to Saxony Anhalt and Thuringia. I thought it was somewhat more inside. But yeah, I, I will look for Neue Hart and I will uh, uh, accelerate the video for now. Got it.
So we were... Yeah, Leipzig Neue Hart. This was... Then we were about here. Get in. 204 meters. I mean... It's still the same parking lot, so... It's a huge parking lot. Um, yeah. Amusement park with rides for all ages. And that's the curse of the pharaoh, apparently. And... Uh, yeah. View summary. Everything was uh, in East Germany, uh, of course. 19,525 points. Which is um, above average. Average was about, what was it, 11,000 something. So I'm happy, I'm happy. 25,000 is the maximum, so I am happy. I can't play that again. And I'm not that far off from, from third place, so... Yeah, I have to wait. 23 hours. Okay, maybe I will do some more GeoGuessr Geo -Guess in, in the future and um, buy me that license again. I had it when I when I streamed on Twitch, but uh, for now I don't have it. But uh, yeah, that was nice. Let's move on uh, to the last part. Let's uh, take a look at some uh, cliches that that foreigners have about um, Germany. Uh, let's start with uh, this one here. 15 German stereotypes we won't even try to deny. Um, I won't uh, comment on all of them, but maybe a few. Um, written by Evelyn Smallwood, so I don't know um, who we is, because that's definitely not a German name. Uh, maybe she lives in Germany, but um, okay. Rules are everything. By the way, that's um, uh, Ampelmännchen uh, is the is the German word. It's um, light traffic man from East Germany. Um, in West Germany, they're quite different, um, and people um, uh, want those for for West Germany as well. Some people and some want them uh, to return in East. Germany, but yeah. Uh, it's true, German of order, it's not so much that they love rules, there is certainly plenty of complaining about that, it's more that they love the level of playing field brought on by having every single thing spelled out in black and white. It can be difficult to learn all the rules when you come from another country, but after enough fines from the police for crossing the street against the red man, or yelling matches in the street over a photo you took of a city worker, you learn. That's one of the most um, uh, one of the cliches I hear the most, um, or stereotype I hear the most, that that rules, that we are obsessed with rules and punctuality and stuff like that. And uh, no, um, actually, yes, when when we when we have an appointment and we go to a party, uh, we try to get there in time to be punctual. Um, because it's it's rude to to come too late, and if you come late, you you say that you come late. But um, because our train system is more uh, is is uh, not that punctual, um, there might be um, yeah, you might be late, and maybe you 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 need too long to get ready and stuff, and you get late. And it's it's not that uncommon when when I throw a party and I say the party starts at eight, then most in at eight, maybe two of the guests are um, actually there. Some then come five minutes after eight. Some come ten minutes after eight. The majority comes perhaps about a quarter to a half an hour later, and some even even later. So it's not like. Um, it's, it's not a thing. And as I just said, um, trains and stuff, um, especially um, the, the um, trains of the Bahn, of the Deutsche Bahn, um, which is the railway company that runs the, um, uh, the, the trains that run through all to the, the whole country, um, they are mostly late. I have never gotten a punctual train when I wanted to travel anywhere. <laughs> Private and public are two uh, very different things. That's European. Fresh air cures all ills. 
Germans love fresh air, particularly in rooms where sleeping happens. The land of logic and reason still thinks that uh, stagnant air carries disease and is generally not good for the Gesundheit or health. Most houses in Germany have radiant or underfloor heating, so there is very little fresh air introduced naturally. Happily, there is a solution. Leave the bedroom window open all day with the heating on full. No, that's not a thing here. Um, we do care a lot about environment and by... As with stereotypes, um, they try to generalize the people um, and so do I now. But uh, disclaimer, this does not count for all Germans and um, I'm the prime example for exceptions of stereotypes because I'm never punctual, I hate working and stuff like that. Uh, and by hate working I mean I don't love it. I, I rather have free time than working, which is the case for most, but that's another stereotype. Um, maybe they come to that, but I, but I once heard someone saying that Germans would rather work than take their holidays, for example, which is bullshit and completely nonsense because most Germans I know, and by that I mean pretty much all Germans I know, um, are happy about their vacation time. Um, vacation is, you have uh, at least 20 days a year vacation by law and you have to take them as well as you have to take your breaks. If you work eight hours a day, you have to take a one hour break. So your work day is nine hours long, um, but you have to take that break. If you work during this break, you are actually doing something illegal, um, which your um, employer can be fined for if he encourages it, or you can be fined for. Um, which is why, for example, American companies in Germany, like uh, GameStop, where I worked, um, are very eager that you take your break because they were fined and the fines are high. Um, if they are catched um, encouraging workers not taking their break and it all has to be documented and it has to be clear and I have to leave the store if I can um, when I take my break so yeah that's that and what uh, the the uh, uh, the the opposite of that is what I heard about the US where you don't have um, uh, vacation days or you are encouraged to um, change those vacation days um, for money so so there are workers they that never go on vacation or if they go on vacation there are like outsiders and and there are frowned upon stuff like that uh, which is very weird and I would never want to live and work in such an environment and in Germany it's the complete opposite. Uh, fresh air cures all else. So that's also um, wh what I wanted to say is uh, with the heating full on, no, we know um, that you don't have the window open with the heating full on and um, it is scientifically proven that um, a room temperature one degree um, below the normal room temperature, so 21 degrees Celsius, um, is the best temperature um, for uh, to go to sleep, because um, your your body can can cool down faster and um, you can fall asleep faster. Um, but that's not the reason. The reason is when you have the windows closed all the day, um, especially in the sleeping room where you know your breath is foully um, very quickly when you when you sleep and uh, the the sweating and other fumes that come out of your body uh, while you're sleeping um, there are collected in the room and they have to get out the room you don't want to sleep in a room that stinks and um, it's more about that it not stinks that it's not too hot especially in summer and um, so open windows is is uh, i don't know i don't see how this would be, be a bad thing and it is bad for for your health um if you have um a closed um closed air in trapped air in your in your home because it's dense air it's smell smelly air and um 
all the all the bacteria, all the stuff that you breathe out and that are in the air anyway um, are trapped inside and no it's it's not nice and uh, we are not that keen about um, climate uh, thingies um, how, how are we air coolers or something like that because we can just open the window and that's pretty more cheap it's not that hot here like in new york for example or in los angeles um so yeah but a draft can kill you yeah when you have um a cold um uh, cold air um coming in um in in, in german we we, we uh, call this it's that this is seat so it's it's pulling <laughs> in uh, directly um translated um that means uh, that in in an otherwise warm room you have this this cold strip of air um and your immune system does not like that uh, very much and this can cause um infections like like a cold or um even uh muscular um illnesses like uh, a stiff stiff neck for example and um so yeah i don't i also don't see what's what's wrong here irony nine danke no thanks much is made about germans have a sense of humor fail at pretty well at times it's not that germans don't like joke they are just to english speakers not very funny mostly this is because germans in general don't understand irony and that the entire foundation of humor in english speaking cultures is self desprecation sarcasm and double meanings what the heck? Um, Evelyn, you have no clue about Germans, apparently, because yes, we are, we are very, very well in understanding irony. We mostly love American and British comedy, uh, especially the dark British humor. Um, we have very successful and very funny German um, comedians who are some of which are also um, in, in, the, in foreign countries uh, very successful. Like in Great Britain, there is one comedian who does his um, gigs on, on, on English. He's uh, Henning, Henning something, or is the last name Henning? Um, anyway, I will uh, put him uh, in, the, in the info text box, but um, and, and the entirety of, of our humor is based upon sarcasm, irony, and puns. Um, our whole culture is based on puns, uh, which are double meanings and, and stuff like that. Um, we are the kings of double meanings. The, I think the the problem that some things uh, some think that Germans have no humor or that, that they think that Germans are not that funny is because uh, puns and double meanings are more funny if you can um, if you can understand them. So as a foreigner, if you speak a foreign language, then you don't understand them. This is why pun, English puns often don't work for Germans because they do not do not know the context. Um, they do sometimes not even um, get that you made a pun. I mean, uh, if you say a beaver um, swims until he says damn is something that we would understand, but other things with cultural references or um, more niche words um, with double meanings are are not that common to us so we don't understand it and the other way around we have also cultural puns and uh niche words and stuff like that which um would uh, english english speakers wouldn't understand so it's it's not that we don't have a humor and especially not that we don't have irony uh, being super cautious is standard germans don't as people have much appetite for risk if you can think of a situation there is an insurance for it personal liability insurance while cheap is a must for residents if a car hits a biker who is permanently injured as a result the driver is liable for the biker's medical costs for the rest of their life uh, not really uh, businesses ensure their employees on the journey to and from work but only if the employee takes the most direct route so naturally almost everyone has initial blah 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 blah, blah. um 
partly true. I mean, there is an insurance for everything, as is in most countries. And I uh, always think about um, those US people who go from house to house and want to sell insurances, which is not a thing here. Um, but not everyone has every insurance. And yes, you are, uh, you have an, you are, if you if you if you have a job and if the job is um, uh, if you make enough money at that job a job that uh, you have to uh, pay income tax and insurances, um, then you have four insurances: health insurance, um, invalidation insurance, um, pension insurance. I just make these translations up as I go. And uh, the uh, um, unemployment insurance. So if you lose the job, the unemployment insurance will um, pay you. If you have at least worked uh, for a year, you get 60% um, of your net income um, for up to, I think, two years. If you have worked for 20 years or so at that, at that job. Uh, in most cases, it's about three and nine months. Um, the uh, I don't think it, if it's the invalid uh, invalidation uh, insurance, but it's if you get hurt or ill so much that you can't work again. So maybe you are an author and your hands got cut off. You can never work as an author again and pretty much at ev any job again. Um, then this insurance keeps you safe and keeps you an income even though you can't work because we don't want people to die. Um, then you have the um, pension insurance because at the age of now 67 um, you go into pension, you have don't have to work anymore, but you again have to pay your bills, you have to eat, you have to drink. Uh, that's this insurance because the um, the the social care what we have in germany is not that high you want a good pension um which is always a problem in germany and you have the health insurance in in contrast to the us and some other states we have a universal health care system we are actually by law um forced and yes i say forced uh, to have a health insurance, um, even if we don't have a job, even if we have a job that pays less than the insurance costs, we have to have a health insurance because um, this insurance pays for the doctor. Um, in Germany, we do not pay for the doctor. Even those who pay for the doctor, who are privately insurance, get that money back later from their insurance. And um, when you have a job, Again, um, that that pays enough that you have these four insurances. Then you are also insuranced for your time at work if there happens an accident, which is completely by the the. Uh, this is not an insurance you have to pay yourself or partly yourself, like the other four that are um, paid partly by you. Um, you have um, a accident insurance. So if any accident happens during work or on the way to work or on the way back from work, this is um, uh, covered by the accident insurance. But I have, I do not know of anyone who has a, a private accident insurance for other cases because most of that is covered by um, the health insurance that everyone has. And that not only uh, accounts for the time that you are at work, but also the time you are in private. And uh, I, for one, for example, um, have only one insurance, which is my health insurance, because I have to have this one. I have no other insurance. I don't, do not even have the basic insurances every citizen should have. Um, like, for example, the, the um, host, household um, insurance, which um, in, makes sure if... For example, someone uh, I have I have a guest here, and he breaks something. Then uh, his um, or I, I am a guest by anyone with anyone else, and and I break something at their home accidentally. Then this um, household insurance would take over, I think. Or is it, is it the other one? 
anyway, I don't have those because I'm careful. And even if not, I pay. <laughs> um, because too much paperwork for me. But yeah, no, uh, so yeah. Uh, Berliners are the Latin Americans of Germany, which is, wow, a double cliche about Latin Americans, apparently. It seems Berliners didn't get the memo about conforming to both German stereotypes as part of their role as residents of the capital city. The rest of Germany makes fun of Berliners for their relaxed approach on timekeeping and getting things done. Berlin Airport, anyone? Or taking three years to build two kilometers of new tram lines? Berliners also know to regard contarianism as a sport at which they alone are now and forever world champions. I don't know about this one. I have never heard anyone making fun of Berliners for that case. Mostly they make fun about East Berliners because people make fun about people from East Germany, especially from Berlin. Um, and this is what, what I mean. Most Germans do not uh, fall under these stereotypes that foreigners have about Germans. Uh, yeah, garden gnomes, I, I, I won't even tackle that. They're not a thing. <laughs> not really. I mean, there are a thing, but only for very, very old people, I think. Uh, and for younger people, maybe only as a meme. Allotments are everywhere. Look carefully out the window of any local and regional train you're on and you'll see periodic clumps of little sheds. These are not, as I first thought, a creative solution to the homeless per uh, homeless problem, but rather Schrebergarten allotments. As with most things uh, designed to give pleasure in the do in the in Germany, uh, these are very serious business. There are a lot of rules about what you can grow, and uh, the wait list for a plot in a central part of the city can be ten years. Yo, I don't see anything wrong here because. Everyone loves gardens. Um, houses with gardens are more expensive and more people want them. Um, but not everyone can uh, have them because they are expensive. And uh, especially in dense cities, when you live in, in uh, more family homes, as we call them, uh, living blocks. I, I don't know the English word. You know what I mean. Um, dense, dense houses. Um, you you usually don't have your own garden. Sometimes you don't even have a balcony. If no balcony, <laughs> sorry. And uh, for those people, a Schrebergarten is an opportunity to have some kind of garden, to um, have a place where you can go in summer to to maybe have a, um, a barbecue fest or something like that, or just to to grow some plants and be in somewhat nature, because especially in cities like Berlin, Hamburg, Bremen, Köln, München, you don't have a garden and uh, anywhere and you don't have a park anywhere and uh, some you want to be more or less rural and, and, and maybe a bit in the green, where the air is fresher and best, better. So that's why allotments are... Um, not only everywhere, there are specific parts in every um, city um, where these allotments are. In Hamburg, for example, um, I have one in that direction, one in that direction, and one in that direction close by. And there are hundreds, I think, in, in, in Hamburg. And um, nothing else can be built there. You are not allowed to live there permanently. Um, and uh, there are some rules because um, you don't buy those allotments. You just rent them. Um, if you um, can't pay anymore, for example, then those allotments go to the next one. And um, it's like in your in your flat, you, you can't uh, just randomly... Um, make holes in the walls uh, because in your or apartment um, because you are not you don't not, you do not own that flat you do not own an apartment so it's the same with the Schürbergarten. You, you can't make things that would be bad 
uh, for the, the resale value or re-rental value. The only water worth drinking is sparkling water, uh, despite freely having access to what by world standards is considered top quality water from a tap inside their house. Most Germans carry 9 liters of sparkling drinking water home from the store, even if they don't have a car. This is of course 9 kilo or nearly 20 pounds. Tap water is the same family as stale air and is somehow bad for your health. If you are visiting someone at their house and ask for tap water, you probably won't get it. Don't even try it in a restaurant. Just no. I have never had a problem. Um, in Hamburg, we call it Elwasser. Because it's in German, it's Leitungswasser and the short form is Elwasser or L water. Um, and it's pretty common. And um, I know that sparkling water is very, very prominent um, with Germans, but so is uh, so-called silent water, which is just water from from uh, di uh, from a spring. And um, those have usually higher nutrition um, uh, values and and are considered cleaner because the tap water while having a top quality um, is still um, affected by um, things like uh, let's take a look here Germans are direct this is funny, most of those stereotypes are also stereotypes some Germans have about other Germans. For example, Germans are direct is a stereotype that Southern Germans have about Northern Germans. Um, because people from Bavaria or uh, Baden-Württemberg or Hesse or Thuringia or Saxony are considered to be more open, more open-minded and um, more, more warm, warm, warmly. I don't know. Whereas um, people from Schleswig-Holstein, Hamburg, Niedersachsen, Mecklenburg-Vorpommern are considered cold, direct and cl closed. I don't know if that is a word, but I now made it one. You know what I mean. They are not that open. <laughs> and um, which still isn't true because People are people. Some people are that way. Some people are that way. Um, what is true for most Germans is um, that we do not. Uh, we, we like to be efficient and we like to be. Um, how do I put it? Um, we don't like fake attitudes. Like, for example, you have in the US. Um, where you say hello to everyone and and ask your um, taxi driver how his day was. Um, this is this is not the thing here. And this is um, there was once the attempt of uh, Walmart to have stores in Germany, and for various reasons they failed. One of the most prominent reasons uh, reason of those various reasons is that uh, at Walmart, when you are in the US, you know what I mean, there are people who greet you when you come in and they are friendly to you and they say hello, how is your day, how are you, stuff like that. And this is creepy. This For, for us Germans that is creepy. Um, because we know it's it's only played, uh, the people don't really mean it, uh, so it doesn't mean anything to, uh, to us. Um, don't get me wrong, we, we love um, uh, uh, polite people, we love, we love to be asked how we are, but only if it's real, if it's, if it's um, true. If, if we are asked who we are, because the person asking is really interested in, in how we are, uh, which is not the case uh, with those Walmart greeters and it's not the case with um, uh, most people in other cultures who do that just for culturing, re culture reasons. So um, yeah, Germans love football, soccer that is, as does most of the world. I mean that's something you can say about the Britons especially, or Italy, or Brazil, or any place other than the US and India, perhaps. Um, so yeah, we let that slide. So, um, for example, if um, in Corona cases, then then they get the money they paid back, and getting your money back is always a good thing. 
don't you think? Germans are distant, I think we covered that, it's... People are this... I'm, I'm a very distant person, but um, for example, my um, ex-girlfriend was a very open, warm uh, person, born in Hamburg, for, by the way, where I'm born in Saxony, so the direct opposite of what we are supposed to be, according to stereotypes inside Germany. Um, I'm, I'm uh, a little bit xenophobic and, and uh, stuff like that, whereas she went to openly to people and asked them for their names and how they are and stuff like that, and she really meant it. Um, so yeah, that's not that distant. And um, if, 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 you are, if you are do a trip to Germany and um, you lost your way, you can ask pretty much anyone on the street um, for your direction. Most people will help you, especially if they speak English, which is true for pretty much all um, young and middle-aged Germans, not so much for those uh, 50 plus, um, especially not in East Germany, because um, until 1990 they were taught Russian and not English. So, um, but in, uh, in all of Germany, um, English is the first foreign language we learn. And the second one is either French, Spanish or Latin. I don't know why some people learn Latin, but they do apparently. Germans love to drink beer. Yeah, it's true. Um, Germany has over 1,300 breweries. Yeah, most of them are, I think 600, 700 of them are in Bavaria alone because most of the um, guest houses there have their own brand and their own brewery. Um, they make their own beer and uh, all the all the monkeries, however you call that, um, yeah. And yeah, we are uh, on, on, on second place only uh, behind the Czech Republic and they invented Pilsner. Yeah, but while I'm the while part of Germany, so I mean the the town Pilsen um, was was German at the time. But yeah, it's it's now theirs. <laughs> Germans love sausage. I mean, we love meat. We um, are a very meat-eating um, culture, that's true, most of us, again. We have vegetarians, we have vegans, we have people who are just not that fond of eating meat, and um, it's not like we, we eat meat to, to every meal. But if you are at the restaurant, at the guest house, then uh, most of the dishes will have, uh, will contain some kind of meat. Because um, we usually always eat meat to special occasions. And going to a restaurant, going to, going to a guest house is mostly a special occasion. That's apart from uh, breakfast um, meat, which uh, for example, Sevelatwurst, uh, which is uh, here, is um, a kind of salami, more or less, and um, it's it's you do it on your bread. Um, currywurst is is just a, 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 I don't know if it's a bockwurst or a bratwurst, but it's it's another kind of wurst just with a curry sauce. Uh, it's it's not their own kind of, of wurst or sausage. I'm I'm I for once, for example, I uh, like to eat um, schnitzel, some sausages, sometimes mostly for bread, and um, yeah, sometimes sometimes a uh, uh, bratwurst or a currywurst is nice, uh, but I prefer steaks and and schnitzel. And uh, especially in Northern Germany, you have a lot of fish eaters. And last but not least, debunked top 50 myth about Germany by the Kulturer. Uh, German roads have no speed limits. As much as Germans love their fast cars, they value order far more. And that kind of chaos would kill them. No, it's not that. It's dangerous. Also, um, so 
what what they do say here is um, that this is only for the autobahn. I think that that's that's common knowledge. Only the autobahn um, has no speed limits, which also is not that kind of, that true because um, only parts of the autobahn have no speed limits. Uh, and by parts, I mean 70% of it. Uh, 30% mostly in denser areas like uh, North Rhine-Westphalia do actually have speed limits, um, but especially those rural roads between Hamburg and Munich or Hamburg and Berlin or Berlin and uh, Rostock or Berlin and Leipzig, stuff like that, um, where you don't pass that dense Uh, densely populated um, areas so much uh, they don't have a speed limit but that's also not that true because they there's you uh, actually have a limit um, how fast you have to go at least which is I think 80 to 90 uh, kilometers per hour if you drive slower than that um, then you are perhaps a risk um, because you are supposed to go adequately fast. You can produce um, traffic jams. And um, you have also an, uh, a suggested speed, which is 120 kilometers per hour. Um, and if you go above that and you have an accident, then your insurance um, will pay much, much less because then they can say, it's your own fault you were too fast and um, I found a study actually that um, checked the average um, uh, the average speed that uh, is driven on those autobahn parts um, where with uh, without speed limits um, and the average speed actually is only 130 kilometers per hour um, only 1% of people go faster than 140 um, kilometers per hour. So it's not like we we would um, love speed so much that we um, just vroom, go with our cars as fast as we can. No, we do also consider other um, factors and, and um, we could, but we don't. Those who drive as fast as, as they can are usually foreigners who uh, maybe have a really, really fast car. And as Germany is the only country in the world, as far as I know, without speed limits or partly without speed limits, the, this is the only place where they can really test that uh, car out. But yeah, everyone in Germany is a Nazi. We had that in the World War II episode. Of course, no, we aren't. And uh, yeah, that's like saying everyone in the United States is part of the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, there is a tiny percentage. That's true. Actually, it's currently about 5% or something like that. Uh, that's what uh, the amount of people who voted for the AFD, the alternative uh, for Germany. Uh, and maybe 2% uh, more for the NPD, which is the successor of the NSDAP. But yeah. German chocolate cake originated in Germany. I have never heard of something like German chocolate cake. What is this? Never heard of it. That is incorrect. I can't even remember how many times I was asked how I enjoyed authentic German chocolate cake when I came back from Germany. This was actually the brainchild of an American named Sam German back in the 1850s and the name has stuck since then. It literally has nothing to do with Germany. Okay, now we have cleared that up. East and West Germany are still two different countries. Uh, where have you been? I'm sure even if I will be driven, most of the other the school, that both sides unified, blah, 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 blah. Which is why we have this video today. It was 30 years ago. But only in official status. Sadly, um, East Germany is still underdeveloped um, in most... Um, uh, studies you find East and West Germany are, um, for the lack of a better term, different countries. They are all, always differentiated. Maybe, for example, if, if our government um, puts out a statistic on um, the average income in Germany, then they um, 
usually um, differentiate between the um, average income in West Germany and the average income in East Germany. Because the average income in East Germany is way, way lower, um, the density is way, way, way lower, um, the, uh, everything is way, way lower in, in East Germany, um, apart from criminality, and of course, um, that's where most of the um, neo-Nazis live. There are neo-Nazis in all of Germany, but um, by percentage, the most live in East Germany. Um, yeah, and this is one of the reasons why uh, actually many people want East Germany back. We talked about this in the German reunification um, video I did. Link is in the description. Germans wear lederhosen and dirndl every day. I'm so sick of that. No, it's not. It's only Bavaria and not even there every day it's just for the oktoberfest and yeah right uh it's 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 a bavarian thing it's uh it has nothing nothing to do with with the rest of germany german is a harsh language and is not pleasing to the ears honestly it really just depends on the person who's speaking it i've actually heard german sound really sexy yes i just admitted that yeah um this, uh, I think this is partly because many people who try to speak German, um, especially if you are an American or, or Britain, um, when they have their own dialect in it, um, it sounds very harsh and they always imagine it like um, because of uh, uh, some, some sounds we have, like this uh, CH sound, uh, which they always... Uh, pronounced like <laughs> like like in Arabic where it in reality is <sighs> which is just a mild blow of wind uh, uh, so for example we don't say Buch, which would sound aggressive and and uh, harsh we say Buch or Mädchen not Mädchen it's yeah they, they oftentimes they over um, uh, exaggerate. Um, if you want to to hear more German examples, um, I, I might make a video about it. I will also make a video maybe about German humor because, yeah, Germany is the fattest nation in Europe. Uh, never heard that, but okay. If Britain enjoys that title, but yeah, with wealth, uh, we are the wealthiest country in in Europe, so it would make sense because uh, the same goes for the wealthiest country in the world, which is also the fattest country in the world, I think, by total numbers. I think there are some island nations where being fat is actually a good thing, and um, who by percentage have, have more obese people, but yeah. The Little Mermaid is a German fairy tale. No, it's Danish, uh, but German can take credit for this one. This was created by Danish poet and author Hans Christian Andersen. Yes, um, there is the um, Little Mermaid statue is in Copenhagen. I was there last year. Uh, however, what Germans can get credit for are Hänsel and Gretel, Rumpelstilzchen, Cinderella, Rapunzel and many other popular fairy tales. Dankeschön, Brothers Grimm. Not only Brothers Grimm. There are so, so, so many fairy tales. Germany is the land of fairy tales. Um, I actually have a picture... Um, which takes a while to load, but this is where famous um, fairy tales take place. This map was created um, before reunification, so you will see uh, former territory. <laughs> yes, this is an old map. Um, but yeah, that's all fairy tales that take um, place in uh, Germany. For example, one of the most prominent ones, uh, who's I think not by the brother, uh, Brothers Grimm, is the uh, town musicians of Bremen, because you also have them kind of in, in The Witcher 3 and in Gwent, for example. Um, and uh, yeah, but Brothers Grimm, of course, here Schneewittchen. Um, Frau Holle and König Drosselbart and 
stuff like that uh there is there is a lot of fairy tales and yes uh the little mermaid is somewhere right down up here the extent of the german cuisine is sausage and sauerkraut most people i know don't even like sauerkraut i don't know where that comes from we uh, this is also a special thing in the south uh, which might be the reason for the cliche because most of the cliches about germany are from um from uh, South Germany, and um, yeah, if you are wondering why I am wearing headphones now, I had to uh, do a break in between because my uh, cats were going rogue, and I had to watch them, and I had to watch uh, I watched YouTube videos um, during that, and um, I forgot to take them off. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we had that. Uh, all Germans are well educated and affluent. Uh, while the educational system in Germany is superb, and many Germans take it, what? Partly in in, in Bavaria uh, and in Saxony maybe, but for example, these uh, educational system in Hamburg and Berlin, and uh, I think also North Rhine-Westphalia is way behind. And Germany um, as a whole is way behind other countries like the Scandinavian countries, so... And many Germans take advantage of uh, all of them, apart from university. Uh, it's not entirely egalitarian and not everyone you meet in Germany will be drowning in multiple degrees. There's a sizable lowbrow lower middle class society where children are sorted out brave new world style down to the wardrobe. Uh, I never read Brave New World. I don't get that reference, but yeah, that my cat's gone rogue again. Hi, cat. Don't stare at me like that. Yeah, you don't understand me. Uh, Oktoberfest is the only thing to. I, I don't. I think that's that's. No one believes that. Yeah, that's it. I would say. Let's let's wave the flag once again. Um, if you have stereotypes about Germany, let me know um, in the comment section. I may uh, my, uh, might make video, uh, another video about that. Um, and if, if you have questions about Germany um, altogether or the German culture, German people, then uh, let me know in the Discord server or in the comments. Um, and uh, I want to do a special on uh, what we have uh, talked about on this channel before. So please join the Discord and, and leave me some uh, questions for a test I can do. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you could sleep in. And um, yeah, um, as I said, the next video will come out in uh, about a week it will be ancient rome and the next the next special i have planned uh, will be on uh halloween will be a scary special Ooh. and maybe there are some some own content in between i try to to get a groove in it um it's it's I have no script or something, so please forgive me if it's if it's long going. Uh, I may I might make uh, a, a many cuts in between, and um, just to to keep the flow going or something like that. But uh, yeah, um, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. Um, if you don't like it, please dislike and tell me why. And uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Have a good night.